America in the 1920s, often referred to as the Roaring Twenties, was a time of significant change. Following the conclusion of the First World War, the nation was awash in a tide of euphoria. Soldiers returned home, their hearts filled with relief and their minds buzzing with dreams of a peaceful, prosperous future. The economy too was buoyant, riding on the crest of a wave that promised abundance and opportunity for all. But this was not just a time of economic prosperity. The 1920s also brought with it a cultural shift. Traditional norms were challenged, jazz music filled the air, flappers danced the Charleston, and literature blossomed with the works of the lost generation. This was a decade of liberation, of pushing boundaries and of questioning the status quo. In the midst of this social and economic transformation, the political landscape too was undergoing a sea change. The nation, weary from the war, was shifting towards conservatism and isolationism. The collective mood was one of return to normalcy, a phrase popularized by then-President Warren G. Harding. The focus was on internal growth and stability, a turning away from the world stage. Speaking of Harding, he was just one of the significant political figures of the time. His presidency, though marred by scandal, was a critical part of the political fabric of the 1920s. Following him was Calvin Coolidge, known as Silent Cal, whose laissez-faire policies further boosted the economy. And then there was Herbert Hoover, who took office just as the decade was drawing to a close and whose term was to be defined by the onset of the Great Depression. The 1920s were a time of immense change, politically and otherwise. The policies enacted, the decisions made, and the leaders who emerged during this time helped shape the course of American history. So let's dig deeper into this transformative decade and its political happenings. The 1920s kicked off with the election of President Warren G. Harding in 1920. A man of charisma and charm, Harding, a self-proclaimed man of the people, promised a return to normalcy following the tumultuous years of World War I. His promise was not just about restoring peace, it was about bringing back a sense of familiarity, stability and prosperity to the American people who had seen too much upheaval and change. Harding's vision of normalcy was intrinsically tied to his pro-business policies. He believed that by fostering a business-friendly environment, he could stimulate economic growth and prosperity. His administration worked towards reducing taxes, easing business regulations and promoting free enterprise. This approach was largely welcomed by the business community and the wealthy who thrived during Harding's presidency. But while Harding may have been a champion for business, his presidency was far from scandal-free. In fact, it was marred by numerous controversies, the most infamous of which was the Teapot Dome scandal. In this scandal, Harding's Interior Secretary, Albert B. Fall, was found guilty of leasing Navy Petroleum Reserves at Teapot Dome in Wyoming and two other locations in California to private oil companies at low rates without competitive bidding. The scandal, which unfolded after Harding's death, was a gross display of corruption and served as a major blow to the public's faith in the government. Even though Harding's presidency ended prematurely due to his sudden death in 1923, his legacy was already tarnished. His pro-business policies may have brought about economic growth, but they also widened the wealth gap. His promise of normalcy turned out to be a facade, overshadowed by the corruption and scandal that plagued his administration. Harding's presidency, while promising on the surface, was fraught with corruption and scandal. The normalcy he promised was a far cry from the reality of his time in office, serving as a stark reminder of the complexities and challenges of political leadership. Following Harding's sudden death in 1923, Vice President Calvin Coolidge assumed the presidency. Calvin Coolidge, or as he was affectionately known, Silent Cal, was a man of few words. Yet his belief in the power of business and free enterprise spoke volumes about his presidency. Coolidge was an ardent supporter of Harding's pro-business policies and he carried this torch forward with great enthusiasm. He believed in the idea that government should not interfere with business and that laissez-faire economics was the key to prosperity. Coolidge's hands-off approach to government was not a sign of inactivity, but rather a deliberate strategy. He was a firm believer in the wisdom of the American people and the free market, and he felt that the government's role was to create a supportive environment for these forces to thrive. 
This meant low taxes, limited regulation and a balanced budget. His presidency was marked by economic growth. The mid-twenties, often referred to as the boom years, were a time of great prosperity in America. Coolidge's policies of fiscal conservatism and laissez-faire economics were the driving force behind this economic expansion. His administration saw a surge in consumer spending, a stock market on the rise, and a nation reveling in the fruits of economic prosperity. Businesses thrived and people had more money to spend. There was a sense of optimism and excitement in the air. The Roaring Twenties, as they were known, were in full swing, and Coolidge was at the helm, steering the ship with a steady hand. Yet for all the prosperity, Coolidge was not without his critics. Some argued that his policies favoured the rich and big business, creating wealth inequality. Others believed that his laissez-faire approach set the stage for the economic collapse that was to come in the form of the Great Depression. But whether you view him as a champion of free enterprise or a harbinger of economic disaster, there's no denying that Coolidge's presidency left an indelible mark on the American economy. Coolidge's laissez-faire politics fueled the economic prosperity of the Roaring Twenties. The prosperity of the 1920s came to a crashing halt with the stock market crash of 1929. This cataclysmic event marked the beginning of the Great Depression, a period of severe economic downturn that would last a decade. At the helm during this turbulent time was President Herbert Hoover. A self-made millionaire and a brilliant engineer, Hoover was no stranger to crisis management. He had successfully led relief efforts during World War I and the Great Mississippi Flood. However, the economic crisis was a different beast altogether. His belief in limited government intervention and individualism seemed out of touch with the scale of the crisis. Hoover's response to the stock market crash was initially optimistic. He assured the nation that the economy was fundamentally sound and the crisis would be temporary. But as the depression deepened, optimism began to fade. Unemployment soared, banks failed, and thousands of Americans found themselves homeless and hungry. It was clear that Hoover's laissez-faire approach was not working. In an attempt to salvage the situation, Hoover did implement some measures. He signed uh, the Smoot-Hawley Tariff Act, aiming to protect American businesses by raising import tariffs. But this move backfired, leading to a decrease in international trade and worsening the economic downturn. Hoover also initiated public works projects and established the Reconstruction Finance Corporation to lend money to banks and businesses, but these measures were too little, too late. The public's faith in Hoover's leadership had eroded. Shantytowns sprouting up around the country were sarcastically dubbed Hoovervilles, reflecting the widespread discontent with his handling of the crisis. Herbert Hoover, once hailed as a great humanitarian and a capable leader, was now a symbol of failed leadership. The criticism he faced was relentless and his reputation never fully recovered. His presidency, which had started with such promise, ended in disappointment and disillusionment. Hoover's presidency marked the end of the Roaring Twenties and the start of a decade of economic despair. The Great Depression was a bitter pill to swallow, a stark reminder that prosperity can be fleeting and that leadership in crisis is a true test of character. The 1920s was a decade of significant political change. A shift towards conservatism marked the era as the nation sought to find its footing after the tumultuous years of World War I. The presidential terms of Harding, Coolidge and Hoover were characterized by a strong emphasis on business prosperity and laissez-faire economics. This approach to governance led to a period of significant economic growth widely known as the Roaring Twenties. President Harding's term, however, was short-lived due to his untimely death in 1923. Despite this, his influence on the political landscape was indelible. His promise of a return to normalcy resonated with the American public, weary from the upheavals of war. Harding's administration, though, was not without scandal. The infamous Teapot Dome scandal, which involved the illegal leasing of federal oil reserves, marred his legacy and shook public confidence in the government. Following Harding's death, President Coolidge, affectionately known as Silent Cal, took the reins. He continued the pro-business policies of his predecessor, leading the nation into an economic boom. His belief in minimal government interference in business and industry became the cornerstone of his presidency. However, the prosperity of the Roaring Twenties came to a crashing halt with the stock market crash of 1929. This catastrophic event marked the onset of the Great Depression under President Hoover. 
The laissez-faire policies that once fueled economic growth now seem to exacerbate the financial crisis. The nation's faith in the government waned, leading to a clamor for change. In retrospect, the 1920s was a decade that saw a significant shift in the American political landscape. The emphasis on business prosperity, the onset of an economic depression and the shift towards conservatism all played a pivotal role in shaping the decades that followed. The political landscape of the 1920s set the stage for the tumultuous decades that followed.